Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I thought we'd hunt Guitar Center tonight, mainly because I just saw they came out with this new Umber Burst finish, which I thought was just pretty cool. So all these are based on the Ultra series, so that means you've got the flame top on a Stratocaster, which you don't always see every day. You've got the noiseless pickups, which they're not my favorite, but they work for some people. But that black headstock with the matching red back, and the whole evil burst vibe here definitely caught my attention. They've also got a Telecaster in that same setup, a Precision Bass, and another one of the Stratocasters, but this time in an HSS setup. So if anybody's interested in new guitar dang one of those, I'd be interested in checking it out. Even though we've technically already reviewed the series, that's just an awesome finish. But I'm not here to hunt new guitars tonight. I want to see what they have in their used inventory. Oh, it's here! I didn't realize they had put this on their website. So one of the main buyers for Guitar Center recently found this very fascinating Silver Burst Les Paul Deluxe. And to put things into perspective here, Silver Burst is just not a finish anybody's ever seen on a Deluxe. And apparently there was just a very small handful of these things existing. According to the listing, it's a 1981, so it's before Custom Shop Edition or Original Decals came out. But it's got the burst on the back, the headstock, the neck. I would assume it's got it on the edges as well. It's just such a weird, quirky, bizarre custom color guitar. So I chatted him up about it because I was curious what they would be asking. But then he said it was 8,000. It's like... I really, really, really want this guitar, but I don't know if I want it quite that bad because as soon as I buy this, another one's going to show up that's like half the price, but custom color deluxe are definitely worth a lot of money. So they're basically asking the same amount of one of the sparkle top deluxe might have cost. And I think that's totally a fair price to put on it while you're fishing out the market because this is just a weird anomaly. And I was talking to him and he was saying Guitar Center might actually even do a custom run of these as like a reissue similar to how they did those Sparkle Top Deluxe. Now here we've got an 82 Heritage Series Flying V. So this is from the initial reissue of these guitars from the 80s. But whoa, I thought that was natural from this photo because that's what they usually are, but no, that's a pretty rare candy apple red. Wow, that's rocking. No wonder somebody replaced the pickups with DiMarzio's. Looks like it's on sale, $66.50. Problem with Guitar Center Online is you never really get much of a description or photos on it. That could be a deal if you happen to have a set of gold Tim Shaw's in your closet to restore that one. Next up, we got a 1980 Les Paul Artisan. We just recently re-reviewed the Artisan in this episode. Being a 1980, it was birthed in the two pickup era for the Artisan, so that's definitely correct. And you've got the sunburst color. Well, that's kind of a cool serial number. It looks like it's got a lot of zeros in it. 8060026. Six and a half is definitely a high price for those, but people are asking more and more for these every day. Not that they're necessarily getting it. Oh, nice. These Widows have been getting harder and harder to find. In fact, I'm to the point where I want a complete collection of the 2013 Rosewood fretboard Widows. But it's looking like this might be a Gen 3 that has the rich light fretboard. But let's look at all the photos just to be sure. Yep, 2017. 6,000 definitely top dollar, but it will probably eventually sell. Here's a funny one. This is at 7,000 is a 58 Junior. But you can see somebody's modified it from being a rap tail in the early 70s with a harmonica bridge. <laughs> the intonation might be better, but it's definitely going to feel a little bit different. I like how they still installed the tailpiece a little bit crooked, probably to match the original angle of the rap tailpiece. What do we got going on here? 1974 Deluxe for 6000 In the early 70s Deluxe, I mean, those are the ones that everybody really wants. The ones with the volutes, I mean, yeah, they got the pancake body, but basically once they switch over to Maple Necks, the whole collector base for those guitars changes. Not saying one's better than the other, I'm actually quite fond of the Maple Neck ones, but when it comes to the Sparkle Tops, I definitely prefer the Mahogany Necked variations. That one seems priced a little bit high for having non-original pickups though. But you also have to remember, this is Guitar Center, they're gonna post things for top value plus that way they have room to come down because generally how guitar center works is it takes like 90 days before they even consider taking a lesser offer on a vintage guitar and then they have just like a pricing structure where it consistently falls down until it eventually sells and sometimes guitar center gets some really cool stuff like for example this one we've actually talked about this on quite a few episodes this is an example of a dealer flipping to another dealer this is that chameleon r6 that has that whole bluish green flip flop finish now look better in the dealer's photos, but if I remember the story correctly, these guys got it from them at a guitar show. Guitar shows are where dealers go to show off their inventory and swap pieces with each other, just to, you know, freshen up their shop. Looks like this one's currently at 5% off, listed at 5220 It just makes me sad when I see this, because it probably means they picked it up for 3600 bucks, which I totally would have picked it up for that too. 
What's the story on the 72? Oh my goodness, is that a real 72? Wow, that looks so strange. So if you're wondering why I'm saying, is that a real 72? It's because the real 72s have the Gibson embossed pickup covers, and these are incredibly hard to find. They don't surface to the market very often. I wouldn't mind having a 72 custom in my collection, but this one's definitely player's grade. It was refretted. Looks like somebody might have swapped out our knobs too. But if you're buying an early 70s custom, just know the frets are very, very tiny on them. I'm not a big fan personally, but that headstock does not look right. So there's a small period in time in 1980 when the headstocks kind of looked like this, where the logo is just a little bit lower than normal and they kind of have that fake look to them. But this almost has like the shrunken headstock 50s Les Paul custom thing going on. Let's keep digging here. Looks like somebody signed it, maybe Bo Diddley in 1991. It's got the wear and tear. Backside of the headstock looks fine. It's got a pancake body. It could just be a very strange angle for this one. That's not that bad of a price for one of those. Hmm, maybe it's not a true 72 if the seal is broken on the Gibson branded covers. I definitely want to see more photos of that one personally. But what color is this 2550? I mean, it probably started life as a wine red, which is kind of a hard finish to find. So the Golden Gooses used to be wine red and black. Lately, there's been a heck of a lot of red and black ones on the market. Naturals now become the real hard one to find, but it's mainly because people hold on to them because they're so beautiful. That is not a bad looking example. It looks like the finish has faded quite a bit. And we've only got three photos, so we can't really judge the back. We at least have replaced strap buttons. Not original case. That's all right, chainsaws are pretty easy to find. But with crazy asking prices on reverb, 5,000 on that, I would still say it's a little high, but it's definitely within reason. But if you're looking for a wine red one, Guitar Center's got it. This episode's not sponsored by Guitar Center or anything, they just have a lot of stores across the country. They're inevitably going to have some interesting stuff. Like this guy. Some of my favorite 335s that I've never owned are the Rusty Anderson Signatures. And that's because it's the first 335 that ever caught my attention as a Les Paul lover because they generally have fantastic natural tops. Now this one, it's not the best for a Rusty Anderson. It was pretty nice. Here's a 71 Deluxe that we can treat you to some history of. These little rings around here, they're called goof hider rings. Basically, if something got messed up during the routing process, or they accidentally routed it for humbuckers, or there's just a little bit of a zoop, the machine got bumped or something, they put these goof hider rings on it. Sometimes you can find them around strap buttons if they had to move it. Sometimes you'll find a black disc around the stop bar tailpiece studs, or even the bridge. Goof hiders are an interesting part of early 70s Gibson history. Here's an interesting one. I recently had somebody commission a private help session on my website about custom ordering an SG custom with two pickups. And he was asking me basically, is it worth it or not? And I told him, if you value having a brand new guitar, yes, it will be worth it, but it's gonna instantly be devalued because he was basically looking for a Pelham Blue SG custom, which granted, th there's not a lot of options out there, but there have been signature models in the past. For example, I told him maybe hunt out one of the Elliott Easton signature models from the 2000s because that's going to hold its value a little bit better. However, if he's not tied down to the whole Pelham Blue thing, this would be a very solid option for him. And that's certainly going to be a lot cheaper than the custom order price tag. I'll have to send that to him. SG Elegance are another really cool variation on the SG. I really like the mid-2000s historic reissues because generally they trend less than the brand new ones because they're not high glue constructed and whatnot. You can really just buy these to be great players. But this one is a rare black top. I've always loved black colored bursts because they're only ebony on the front. The sides are still natural. So it gives them a really cool vibe. And there's a story of a vintage one where some guy wanted a black Les Paul custom, but he wanted to pay the Les Paul standard pricing. So they sent it back to Gibson and they just like shot it over black for him or something like that. And that birthed the black burst and then it aged so beautifully so you're definitely paying a premium on this one for the ebony finish and oh wow that one's a 57 reissue that's definitely towards the top of the market now this could be interesting 1987 prehistoric reissue so if you watch my show you know the prehistoric reissues are a thing starting in 1983 and i have documented a gold top prehistoric it had an interesting thumbnail with a t-rex on it <laughs> but a lot of people don't realize these were a thing they made prehistoric r7 reissues but what's really cool about this one is it's from 1987 so it's got the seven like you would traditionally expect on like modern day serial numbers you just don't see these all that often 
I'm not going to lie, that is not a bad price at all. The 79 looks a little special to me. Special in the fact that <laughs> looks like our tailpiece is going to heaven and we lost a couple of tuners here. This photo's not much better. <laughs> They've got some weird photo editing software. It's like they downloaded these images from eBay. Yeah, wow. I was trying to see if this was actually a Les Paul KM because it's got that really wide burst to it. But I can't quite see the center seam, but I'm not really seeing any other seams. Okay, I don't even need any of that, my friends. Look at our trapezoid inlays right here. They're mother of pearl. This is indeed a KM that's been modified because normal Les Paul standards did not get the mother of pearl inlays. Now that we know it's a KM, it's priced about appropriately for not having the original pickups. That's why I like hunting Guitar Center. They don't always have everything completely figured out. And it's fun to play detective. I mean, there's nothing against them. What's going on over here? An R5? Surely that has to be a typo. Gibson doesn't reissue the 1955 Les Paul very often. But if you want to check out a video of one, it's the Sergio Valen. But huh, two-piece top, but very clearly off center. I wonder if they did that on purpose so it'd be like the originals because sometimes under the gold paint you would find it off center. Okay, I think this is probably from one of the years where the five might potentially mean something else in this situation. What I would want to see is inside this cavity to see what might be stamped on the shelf. That does seem to be worth looking into because that could be something special. Ah, oh, darn it. I thought that was an aged silver burst for 3500 bucks. Yes, please. No. What has happened to it? It almost has green binding. Somebody had to have sprayed that over because, I mean, they've got the blue in the bridge pickup. So I don't think that's just extra yellowed, but it could just be weird photos. It's like reflecting something else, but it's so even. It's definitely been refretted with railroad tracks. Absolutely no description at all. I don't know, guys, that one might be worth looking into. Because if that's just yellowed binding and you need to swap out a pickup to make it look more traditional, that could be an all right deal for a player. They're finally coming to terms that nobody wants the Les Paul Artist series. If you're ever buying one of these thinking you're going to be able to flip it for so much money, don't waste your time. These have a very limited market. The built-in Moog Electronics, th there's a few ones that sound good, but basically on the back, it doesn't have the back layer of binding. So even though it looks like a custom, they just don't really sell that well. Now something really clean condition, this is a pretty fair price in today's market. Look at that. It almost looks like it's got a Florentine cutaway over here. It doesn't. It's just the photo angle, but that is a deluxe that has been routed for humbuckers. But hey, Whoever took these photos at this guitar center, nice job. It might be in the back room with a whole bunch of boxes and whatnot, but at least you can make out all parts of the guitar in a better way than half these other ones. This is another one that's just a absolute screaming deal. 3100 for this. Like, I'm shocked my Rust Elegant hasn't sold. I view 45 for these to be a fair price. But this one sitting at Guitar Center for 3100 somebody needs to scoop that up or I'm going to. Oh, excuse me? This is rare. This is the E90. Somebody swapped it out for the EMG bridge pickup, but uh, these can sell for ridiculous amounts of money. Usually it's just people asking crazy prices, but they're pretty hard to find. So you can find a bound fretboard version, which is usually the E90 single, and then the E90 double for whatever reason they unbound it. The EMG is a bit of a letdown because finding one of the original Bill Lawrence humbuckers for this would be kind of tricky, but that is a very fair price for a weird piece of Gibson history. Well, I feel like I could just keep going on and on. I'm really impressed with Guitar Center selection. They even got one of these Plum Burst Night Violet Explorers over here with one of the interesting trim systems. That's not a bad price at all if you don't mind the trim. But to round things out tonight, I was kind of tempted by this one as well. It's a Reverse Explorer. I wouldn't normally pay that much for it. I've been looking for one around 18-ish. I want it because it's the Guitar of the Month collection type thing. Maybe it plays better than it looks, like the Reverse Flying V. I guess we'll have to find out another day. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.